Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning, dear students. Welcome to lecture number 17. In this lecture, we will be discussing the judicial reforms introduced by the British from 1757 to 1857. The legal history of the English East India Company commenced with the establishment of this company in 1600. Under this charter, granted by British Crown in 1600 to the English East India Company, it got the monopoly to trade with India. However, since 1757, till it got the political power through the battles of Plassey, you may recall the battles of Plassey in 1757 and through the battles of Pexar of 1764, the English East India Company got political power. And from the establishment of the English East India Company to this acquisition of political power, Mayer's court were constituted in these three presidencies of Madras, Bombay and Calcutta for the administration of justice. But this administration was confined only among the English people and the English servants. They did not come forward to administer Indians. With this mayor's court confined only to the administration of justice among the English people. But after the Battle of Bexar in 1764, in 1765 a dual government was introduced by Robert Clive in Bengal. But only with the appointment of Warren Hastings, he abolished the dual government. That is, dual government means the administration of both the company as well as the Nava of Bengal. Only it was during the period of Warren Hastings, whose period was from 1772 to 1785. In 1772, Warren Hastings abolished the dual system of government created by Robert Clive in Bengal. Before the administration of Warren Hastings, the Semintas decided the cases. In 1772, Warren Hastings introduced the judicial reforms based on Mughal pattern. Before the introduction of these judicial reforms in India, it was Semin Tans who decided disputes among the Indians. He created two court at a district level. One Diwani Adalat, one second one Fauchidari Adalat. Diwani Adalat decided civil cases, Fauchidari Adalat decided criminal cases. It was for the first time the civil and criminal cases began to be separated. The Diwani Adalat or the civil court, it was presided over by the district collector. He was at the same time was the head of the revenue administration of the district. It was the district collector who headed the Divani Adalat at a district level, decided cases relating to personal property, inheritance, 
caste and marriage and debt all these cases were heard at divani adalat presided over by the district collector that the revenue administration and the administration of civil justice were concentrated in the hands of the district collector in civil cases the personal law of the affected parties were used for example in case of the hindus the hindu law was made applicable for the muhammadans muslim law was made applicable but there was no provision for the administration of other laws other than hindu and muslim laws for example there was no provision for personal law as far as christians or parsis were concerned the divani adalat headed by the district collector decided cases involving up to 500 rupees but for all cases above 500 appeals could be made to sadar divani adalat it was located at calcutta this court was to be presided over by the president or the governor at calcutta later through the regulating act of 1773 the post of governor was elevated to the post of governor general and warren hastings became the first governor general and it was the governor general and two members of the supreme council a council was created at calcutta through the regulating act of 1773 they presided over this sadar diwani adalat which was the appeal court in civil cases they were assisted by indian officers well versed in muhammadan and hindu laws this was the case with regard to the civil administration administration of civil law by warren hastings now coming to criminal court of justice introduced by warren hastings at district level fauchidari court was created this court was presided over by indian officers it created criminal cases criminal cases were heard in fauchidari adalat with the help of qasis and muftis in fauchidari court muhammadan law was made applicable even for hindus or the christians muhammadan law was made applicable for the criminal cases in fauchidari adalat the collector he was an english officer he also supervised the functioning of the fauchidari adalat the main duty of the district collector was to ensure that fair and impartial trial had taken place in this fauchidari adalat as you have been told earlier muhammadan law was made applicable in the administration of criminal justice in fauchidari adalat fauchidari adalat was not in a position to award death sentence nor the confiscation of property from the people then likewise the appeals from divani adalat lay to sadar divani adalat appeals in criminal cases were lay from fauchidari adalat to sadar nisamad adalat sadar nisamad adalat was presided over by deputy nasim he was also assisted by indian officers chief qasi and chief mufti and three maulavis they were well versed in 
Muhammadan laws. Muhammadan law was made applicable in the administration of criminal justice in Sadar Nisamat Adalat. The president and the council at Calcutta supervised the functioning of the Sadar Nisamat Adalat. Their main duty was to ensure that fair and impartial trial had been taken place in Sadar Nisamat Adalat. And now it was for the first time Warren Hastings divided the civil and the criminal administration. Civil administration was vested at the district level with the district collector. Along with the administration of civil justice, he was also the head of the revenue administration. So, the revenue administration and the administration of civil justice were concentrated in the hands of the same person. And in a, as you have been told that the British judges, they were guided by the Indian officers Mufti and Kosi. Since these Indian officers were not well aware of the Muhammadan law or the Shastras for the administration of the civil justice for the Hindus. So, these Indian officers helped these English judges in the administration of law. So, these Indian officers mainly acted as interpreters of the Muhammadan law as well as the Shastras of Hindu law. But there was a possibility of misguidance by these Indian officers of Mufti, Maulavi and the Kosis. Since the English officers were not uh, aware of the Indian laws. Collector under the system of civil justice created by Warren Hastings the district collector was the head of the revenue administration in the district as well as he was the head of the Divani Adalat for the administration of civil law. It overburdened the district collector. Only later this revenue administration was separated from, separated from the administration of civil justice. These were the major judicial reforms introduced during the period of Warren Hastings. Now coming to the establishment of Supreme Court for the first time in India. The Supreme Court was established through the Regulating Act of 1773. Under this act, there was a provision for the establishment of Supreme Court at Calcutta. The Supreme Court was established at Calcutta in 1774. Sir Ilija Imbe Ilija Imbe was the first Chief Justice of the Supreme Court created at Calcutta in 1774. Coming to the jurisdictional powers of the Supreme Court, it entertained the jurisdiction over all persons, whether it was Indian or the British in Calcutta. In addition to that, the complaints and the suits from outside Calcutta was also admitted into the Supreme Court with the consent of the affected parties. There were certain merits for the behind the creation of the Supreme Court at Calcutta. The judges of the Supreme Court were expertise, experts in the administration of the law. They were the experts in the legal system as in the case of the English court. 
they were also professional lawyers had a long standing in the legal profession then independence of the judiciary it was for the first time judicial system headed by the supreme court was established in india earlier this executive located at calcutta acted as the executive head of the judiciary in bengal and it was also for the first time different types of writs began to be issued these writs were issued by the supreme court certiorari it means to certify certiorari which literally means to certify mandamus which means we command certiorari or to certify this writ was issued for the transfer of a case from a lower court to another court another higher court mandamus which literally means we command this writ was issued to instruct an official to perform his duty which he had failed to perform the supreme court began to issue these different types of writs one of the major defects with the introduction of the supreme court was that there existed two different types of laws the supreme court administered english law but in fauchidari adalat or diwani adalat these were the two courts at a district level and the appeal court of sadar diwani adalat which decided appeals from diwani adalat and sadar nizamad adalat which decided appeals from fauchidari adalat they used hindu laws as well as muhammadan laws in sadar diwani adalat and diwani adalat the personal law of the affected parties were used to administer the civil justice while on the other hand fauchidari adalat and the appeal court of sadar nizamat adalat muhammadan law was used in addition to this muhammadan hindu laws and the english laws administered by the supreme court the supreme council headed by the president and the council issued regulations as well different types of laws existed in the same place there was a friction between the supreme court sadar diwani adalat in the administration of civil justice and supreme court with sadar nizamat adalat with the administration of criminal justice and in order to remove the friction between the supreme court and these appeal courts warren hastings appointed the chief justice ilija imbe as the superintendent of the sadar diwani adalat which decided appeals in civil cases but it was not approved by the court of directors and following which ilija imbe was required to resign in 1782 in addition to the organization of court warren hastings also paid his attention for the codification of hindu and muslim law which got translated and appeared in 1776 under the title of jandu laws now after the 
period of Warren Hastings. Lord Cornwallis became the next Governor General. His period was from 1786 to 1793. The most important achievements of Cornwallis was in the field of criminal justice. He introduced reforms in the judiciary at three different times. First in 1787, later in 1790 and another reform was introduced in judiciary in 1793. So, the reforms of Cornwallis introduced in judicial field came into known as judicial plan of 1787, 1790 and 1793. In 1787, he made as in during the period of the Warren Hastings district judges of the Diwani Adalat in 1787. It was also during the period of the Warren Hastings, the district collector administered civil law. In 1787, collectors were made the district judges of the Diwani Adalat as in the case of the period of the Warren Hastings, the district collector administered revenue administration as well as the civil law and criminal law to a certain extent during the period of Cornwallis during the reforms introduced in 1787. During the period of Warren Hastings, the district collector involved only the administration of civil law, but during the period of Lord Cornwallis, the district collector was given power to try criminal cases to a certain extent. So, the revenue administration, administration of civil justice and the administration of criminal justice to a certain extent began to be concentrated in the hands of a same person, the district collector. But his judicial plan of 1790 was more rational in character compared to his reforms of 1787. During this period, during his second period of judicial reform spanning between 1790-92, he abolished district Fauchidari Adalat. District Fauchidari Adalat during the period of Warren Hastings decided criminal cases. It was also presided by Indian judges. In its place, he created four circuit courts for the administration of criminal justice. Three for Bengal and one for ben Bihar. He abolished the district criminal court of Fauchidari Adalat, which had to be in existence since the time of Warren Hastings, it was presided over by the Indian judges and decided criminal cases at a district level. It was abolished and he created circuit court which he used it to visit the district two times in a year. Three circuit courts were created for Bengal and one for Bihar. These circuit courts were presided over by the covenanted civil servants. In these circuit courts, which decided criminal cases, also functioned with the support of the Indian officers Kosi and the Mufti. Sadar Nisamat Adalat. It was began to be presided over by the Governor General and the members of the Supreme Council. Earlier, it was during the period of Warren Castings, it was Deputy Nassim who presided over the 
Sadar Nisam of the Dalat. The President and the members of the Supreme Council at Calcutta only supervised the functioning of the Sadar Nisamat Adalat in the administration of criminal justice. But now, the Sadar Nisamat Adalat, it was located from Murshidabad to Calcutta and it began to be presided over by the Governor General and the members of the Supreme Council. In the administration of the criminal justice, Sadar Nisamat Adalat. It was the appeal court in criminal cases, got support from the Indian officers, Kosi and two Mufti. They interpreted the laws, Muhammadan laws, in the administration of criminal laws. Now, Judicial Plan of 1793. It was for the first time he separated revenue administration from the administration of justice. You recall that. It was during the period of Warren Hastings, civil administration and revenue administration were combined in a same person, the district collector. It was during the period of Lord Cornwallis in 1787, the district collector was also given the power to administer criminal justice to a certain extent. But in 1793, he separated revenue administration from the administration of justice. The district collector was made the head of the revenue administration in the district and he took away all judicial and magisterial powers of the district collector. The district collector was now made the main duty of the administration of revenue and for the administration of justice, district judges were made responsible in the district for the administration of justice. District collector whose magisterial and judicial powers were taken away through the judicial plan of 1793. Lord Cornwall is created an hierarchy of courts. At the lowest level, he set up Munsip court. It was at the lowest rung in the administration of civil justice. It was presided over by Indian officers. The Munsip court was the lowest court in deciding civil cases. It was presided over by Indian officers. It decided cases involving dispute up to 50 rupees. Above the Munsip court, he created registrar court for the administration of civil justice. The registrar court was presided over by European officers. It decided cases involving dispute up to 200 rupees. Above the registrar court, district courts were created for the administration of civil justice. It mainly decided appeals from Munsip court and registrar court. It was presided over by the district judges. The district court was presided over by the Indian officers. Sorry, the district judges were the British officers. They decided the disputes with the assistance of Indian officers well versed in law. The district court was presided over by British officials, they decided cases with the support of the Indians who were well versed in legal system. Above the district court, provincial courts were created. Four provincial courts were created during the period of Cornwallis, Calcutta, Mushridabad, Dhaka and Patna. 
these four provincial courts were created it decided civil cases up to 1000 rupees it also decided appeals from the district court as well these provincial courts were also presided over by british judges only the municipal court and registrar's court were presided over by the indian officers but these provincial courts as well as the district courts were presided over by the british officers and they decided the cases with the support of the indian officers well versed in law sadar diwani adalat sadar diwani adalat was the appeal court which decided cases involving 1000 rupees it was presided over by the governor general it was the appeal court which decided appeals from the provincial courts but all civil cases involving disputes of 5000 rupees sorry 5000 pound and above pounds appeals could be given to kings in council appeals were lay to king in council in london with regard to all civil cases involving 5000 british pound and above in criminal cases as it was during the period of warren hastings sharia law was administered but as far as civil cases were concerned for the muhammadans muslim law or sharia law was made applicable and the hindu law was administered for the hindus in the administration of civil justice it was the case same with during the period of warren hastings for the administration of criminal justice for both the hindus and the muslims muhammadan law was made applicable for the administration of civil justice hindu law was made applicable for the hindus and muhammadan law was made applicable for muhammadans or muslims <coughs> government servants were also made responsible for the actions done by them under their official capacity before the court from this it became clear that lord convali tried to maintain the sovereignty of law in india now coming to the criminal administrative reforms introduced by lord convali during the period of warren hastings district fauchidari adalat were existed for the administration of criminal justice it was presided over by indian officers but lord convali is abolished the district fauchidari adalat presided over by the indian officers now the petty criminal cases began to be tried by the district judge above the district judge circuit courts were created for the administration of criminal justice with regard to the serious offences lord convali has created four circuit courts for the administration of criminal justice these circuit courts were presided over by british officers and functioned with the support of qasi and muftis the circuit court got the power to award death punishment or life imprisonment 
about the circuit court, Sadar Nisamad Adalat acted as the court of appeal in criminal cases. It was the highest court of appeal with regard to the criminal cases. And these punishments awarded by the Sadar Nisamad Adalat would be commuted by the Governor General. Lord Cornwallis also reformed the Muhammadan law in the administration of criminal justice. Under this reformed system, the Muslims were able, the non-Muslims were able to give evidence against the Muslims in criminal cases. Earlier, under the Sharia law, it was not possible for the non-Muslims to give evidence against the Muslims in criminal laws, but under the reformed Muhammadan system, Lord Cornwallis empowered the non-Muslims to give evidence against the Muslims in criminal cases. Now, these were the court introduced by Lord Cornwallis. Sadar Diwani Adalat, which was the highest court of appeal in civil cases. Below the Sadar Diwani Adalat, there were four provincial courts. Below the provincial courts, there were district courts which decided civil cases. These district courts were presided over by the British officers belonging to covenanted civil service. Below the district court was registrar court. Below the registrar court was subordinate court or municipal court. These Indian officers were appointed to registrar court and subordinate courts. They were called municipal and amin. Now, under in the criminal justice, Sadar Nisamad Adalat was the highest court of appeal under the judicial system introduced by Lord, Lord, Lord Cornwallis. Below the Sadar Nisamad was circuit court. There were four circuit courts. The circuit courts were also presided over by the covenanted civil servants of the British. District courts were created below the circuit court. Coming to the merits of the reforms introduced by Lord Cornwallis, it was for the first time evidence was given importance in the administration of justice. It was under the Muhammadan law, limbs of the body of the culprit were amputed. Lord Cornwallis abolished the system and it was replaced by temporary hard labor for life or imprisonment according to the circumstance of the case. Earlier, for the blood, price was given by the relatives of the demand of compensation of money in price of blood got abolished. Earlier, there existed a practice whereby money was given to the relatives of those who was murdered. This practice was abolished by Lord Cornwallis. Fee was abolished for litigants. What was the effect of this abolition of fee? It increased the number of cases. The number of litigants increased with the abolition of fee. And it was Lord Cornwallis who laid the foundation for the separation of judicial as well as revenue functions. He took away the judicial functions of the district collector and he was left exclusively to deal with the 
revenue administration of the district. This judicial system created by Lord Convaries was based on the Western principle of equity and conception of justice. He also reformed the Muhammadan law according to the needs of the time. Sovereignty of law was maintained by Lord Convalis and it was also made the government officials answerable to the court for the acts done by them under their official capacity. There were certain inherent defects in the judicial system introduced by Lord Convalis. One was delay in disposal of justice. It took several years to decide a single case. Indians were not appointed in higher posters of the judiciary. In Sadar Nizamad Adalat, Sadar Diwani Adalat, provincial courts, circuit courts, in all these courts, British officials were appointed. Indians were given only appointment in subordinate courts, registrar's courts and the Muhammadan and in Hindu laws, the Indian officers helped the British officials in the interpretation as well as in the administration of justice. These Indian officials are interpreted the Sharia law and the Shastras for the administration of justice to these British officials. Earlier, the Panjait, Semindars, Kosi, Pauchidar, Nasim, they enjoyed judicial powers. Now, the powers of these agencies got replaced by European judges. However, these European judges were not aware of the Indian customs, practices and behavior of the Indians. Now coming to the Charter Act of 1833. The Third Charter Act was passed by the British Parliament in 1833. This Charter Act made the lawmaking power with the Governor General in Council. It would make the laws instead of the Muhammadan laws or the Hindu laws. In the same year, a law commission was appointed for the codification of laws. It was headed by Thomas Babington Macaulay. It was Thomas Babington Macaulay. He created Indian Penal Code. It is made applicable across the country, but it was came to effect only in 1860. Now we are going to make an assessment of the judicial reforms introduced by the British during the period of our study spanning between 1757 to 1857. Rule of law was established in India under which irrespective of the religion, caste, community, all people were to be equal in the eyes of law. It was not according to the official status or the desire of the ruler, the law was administered, all of people would be created on an equal footing before law. It means that nobody was above law, all would be given equal status in the administration of law. This rule of law was created in India during this period. 
those who supervise it that is those who en engage it in the maintenance of law and order was also made accountable to the court even though theoretically even the officials and the people were made on equal footing before the law the civil servants and the police officers engage it in the excess of law then with regard to this equality before law europeans were not included in it separate courts and league laws were existed for the europeans they were not administered by the muhammadan or hindu laws there existed separate english laws for the administration of justice in cases involved by the britishers in criminal cases the britishers would be tried only by the european judges the indian judges and magistrates the indian most of the time the indian judges and magistrates they presided over the district court municipal court and registrar's court in criminal cases even the indian judges and magistrate or could not try the british officers they could be tried only in cases only only in court presided over by the british judges it means that total equality was not implemented since there were separate laws for the britishers as well as the britishers were also not tried in court presided over by the indian magistrates and judges however as far as indians were concerned whether it was hindus or muslims they brought under the administration of a same law a same system of judiciary it created a national unity across the country in the administration of justice there were certain defects in the judicial reforms introduced by the british during this period justice became very expensive stamp fee was very costly it cost the stamp fee was 1000 rupees for property dispute of 50000 rupees so the litigants were were required to pay this high amount of fee before filing cases in this civil court the new laws were complicated beyond the understanding capacity of the common people therefore because of the complication of these new newly codified laws the litigants were required to employ advocates or lawyers it further added the expenses of the litigation in addition to the litigant fee and earlier in this panchayats the cases were settled these disputes were 
settled in the village itself to which the litigants belonged. But now they were required to come to the district towns or the provincial centers for litigation purpose seeking justice. The legal process now became very lengthy in addition to the expensive. Sometimes the litigation went for long years. For example, in Madras, a Semintar complained a file of litigation. This litigation was filed in 1832, but the judgment was finally delivered only in 1896. After a long gap of 64 years. So, the justice became expensive as well as lengthy under the judicial reforms introduced by the British. In addition to that, there exists dual system of courts. The first system that is Sadar Diwani Adalat and the Sadar Nisamad Adalat, where the court created by the English East India Company. What about the Supreme Court? The Supreme Court was created through an act of the British Parliament by the British government. Supreme Court. The Supreme Court was the creation of the British government. So, there existed the dual system of court. One was created by the English East India Company and the other was the creation of the British government by acting through the act of the parliament. So these were the major judicial reforms introduced by the British during this period spanning between 1757 and 1857. Now coming to the major questions on this topic, what were the judicial reforms introduced by Lord Cornwallis? His reforms were in the field of administration of civil law as well as in the criminal justice system. And what were the features of the judicial system introduced by the British? Under this you have to make a critical analysis of the judicial reforms introduced by the British. Make an evaluation of the judicial reforms introduced by Warren Hastings. Thank you students for watching this class. Thank you.
Hello everybody, now uh, the discussion which I would try to um, make uh, talk to you is about the excitement which I always feel and I am sure you will also reciprocate as I proceed and when you do the course is in the area of multivariate statistical problems and multivariate statistical analysis. So, what we mean by multivariate? So, we know that statistics is a, is a subject where you ha have a lot of data, you try to analyze that using different type of techniques like estimation problem, MCMC techniques, then forecasting and the area of time series analysis and then try to basically find out the best forecasting tool which you have such that you are able to gain the maximum amount of information from a set of data. Now, in the recent past, as we see that multivariate statistics has, has, has really increased in a, in, in a very exciting manner and if I trace back to history, it has been going on slowly for the last about 70, 80 years, but now the time has come where it is being used in a very big way and the techniques which we all know, but which are being utilized with new vigor are in the area of say for example, canonical correlation technique, in the area of factor analysis, in the area of conjoint analysis, in the area of clustering analysis, in the area of multidimensional uh, scaling techniques, structural equation modeling, be it in the area of finance, be it in the area of engineering, be it in the area of social sciences, be it in the area of economics, such that you are able to gather the the information from the data in such a way that it really gives you some useful set of information. Now, in the recent um, past, there has been also an explosion of large and complex data sets, but added to that there has also been a, a commensurate increase in the computing and the statistical techniques. So, obviously, the question comes that if the statistical techniques are there for small, so called small data, not the big data, not the, the, the data which is of terabytes and, and, and so on and so forth, where you use different type of computers to state the data, the question obviously comes that are those statistical techniques really relevant when we use them in the big data sense. The question is they are not always relevant, they may not give you the best results. So, what we are seeing in years to come and, and I feel very excited about that is that how the new tools which we have already learned in statistics in multivariate statistical analysis are being redrawn, are being say for example, remodeled in such a way that they can be utilized along with the techniques of computing in a very nice manner that we are able to garner the information from big data very successfully and very nicely in such a way that they are able to portray a sense of information which we all long to have from big data, be it in say for example, medical sciences, be in the area of finance, be it in weather forecasting, be it in transportation, so on and so forth. So, obviously, it means that students, participants who are in a position with some brief mathematical background to take multivariate statistics and statistical tools as a subject in this program are assured are a very exciting future where they can use these tools to, to both gain the knowledge as well utilize them in a very best practical sense such that they are able to do some justice to the information which is given to them and get the best information from the data sets. I wish all the participants in this course the best of luck and I am sure they will also reciprocate the excitement which I have for this type of courses. Thank you.